Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about a popular software design pattern called circuit breaker pattern. I am going to try a new thing today. I am also going to show a sample code of the circuit breaker pattern uh, to so that it is easier to understand how it works. Basically, in modern distributed systems where services and components communicate with, uh, with each other over the network, right? failures are inevitable. The circuit breaker pattern is a powerful tool that can help mitigate this uh, impact of these failures and improve the resiliency of our applications, uh, helping to build more stable systems. In this video, we are going to also delve into obviously the details of the circuit breaker pattern. We are going to see how it works. Uh, a sample implementation that I mentioned and uh, when to use it and what are the considerations and benefits of the circuit breaker pattern. This is a popular pattern and this is something that is often asked in the interviews as well as if you are if you are designing a distributed application anywhere this is like uh, obviously definitely needed for traffic shaping. So let's get started. So what is the circuit breaker pattern to understand that let's look at the problem right. So in an ongoing failure event, continuously retrying requests will not only fail but cause wider cascading failures, right? So in a distributed environment, uh, calls to a remote resource or services can fail due to multiple reasons, right? There can be transient failures, slow network connections, timeouts, uh, resources being uh, overconsumed or temporarily unavailable, right? So these faults typically correct themselves after a short period of time but sometimes there are also situations where due to any unanticipated event uh, the the uh, issue might go on for a longer amount of time right these faults can range in in uh, severity of partial loss of connectivity to complete failure of a service right in these situations it is almost pointless for an application to continuously retry an operation uh, that is not likely to succeed Right? And instead, the application should quickly accept that the operation has failed and handle this failure uh, gracefully. Right? That is where, what is the solution to implement this? The circuit breaker pattern. The circuit breaker pattern is where we basically uh, restrict any kind of request and basically put some kind of an intelligence in the traffic uh, layer so that uh, we are we are able to handle and not bring down a complete service if it is already going through some kind of minor failures right so let's take a look at the pattern so let's say if you have a service right and this service in the past say five requests has all succeeded right now if you are getting requests from the internet or from the external world obviously you are going to allow that request and this is what is called a closed state of the system. Basically, the circuit is closed, which means the traffic is allowed and the traffic is flowing through the circuit, right? Because the service has allowed uh, and successfully responded to the last five requests, right? In another case, let's say the service has partially failed, right? In At this point of time, you are going to partially allow requests to reach the target service and this state is called half open state right we are going to discuss about the state and the transitions and everything and in the last format let's say if your service has completely failed right it has failed all the five last five requests at this point of time you wouldn't normally want your service to get more requests right most of the time the requests are also queued at the application at the service layer right so it is it doesn't make sense to bombard an already failed service with more requests right that can completely choke not only the uh, service but also the entire application right in a distributed application in a microservice architecture this can basically block the entire application right so if there is a request at this point of time you don't even want that request to reach your service you basically fail the uh, request at that point of time because in the past five requests continuously retrying or whatever you know, the service has not responded it has always failed right? so in this case the system is the circuit is in an open open uh, state right because uh, the traffic is not flowing through it is open right so if we look at the circuit breaker pattern altogether uh, it basically has three states right closed half open and open right 
when the circuit breaker is in the closed state it allows the requests to pass through the target service right which is the first uh, uh, arrow that you see here it monitors the responses from the target service and if it detects that a predefined number of failures or errors has happened then it trips and moves to a open state right in the open state the circuit breaker immediately starts rejecting the open state is the last uh, red uh, state that you see it immediately starts rejecting it doesn't even let the request reach the application or reach the service right this help helps to prevent further failures and reduces the load on the failing service right after a specified amount of say time or a timeout period the circuit breaker transitions to a half open state or if it has figured out that there are partial successes that we are getting then it moves to a half open state where depending on your last uh, error time or last issue time it can allow certain requests to go through right if these requests are completely successful uh, when it is in half open state then the circuit breaker moves back to the closed state and then allows the normal operation to resume right however if the failure continues after from the half open state then it again goes back to the open state that is it again starts rejecting all the all the failures so the half open state is in between where it basically decides where to move either to completely open the network or to completely close the network right yeah, and this cycle continues so this is kind of a state machine between the three states uh, if you can understand and if you look at the state machine it is something like this so there are three states closed state allows the traffic always open state does not allow the traffic half open state allows limited traffic right if it if the system is in a closed state then it is always going to allow the traffic and the requests are successful right but from closed to open state that arrow that happens when your failure threshold has reached right if you have been getting a number of failures continuously and you have a threshold for your failure if that is reached then you don't even want the request to reach the uh, target service right so you uh, your failure threshold has reached if you are open if you are in an open state that means you are failing fast you are continuously failing you are not even allowing the request to go to the target service right from open state to the half open state you can allow when you reset your timer basically say you last saw that your requests have been continuously failing and then you said that okay i'm not going to even allow request to go to my service and that timeout period was say one minute or five minutes or ten minutes whatever it is right after that timeout you say okay let me now check if the requests are still passing or not that check that half half check half allow half deny is the state where you are uh, going into a half open state basically you are allowing limited traffic to flow through right from half open state if you figure out that your requests are continuously passing then you again move back to the closed state right that means your success threshold has reached if if your success threshold is three requests at a stretch if i am getting success then move to a closed state right so if you are if you are in a half open state and if you are trying to call the target service see and if you are getting three successful responses then you can basically move the system to a closed state right and if you're getting obviously any failure then from the half open you don't want to obviously continue serving traffic that is basically a checkpoint the half open state from where you want to move the system to either a closed or a open state if it fails then obviously you are going to move to the open state right this is very important the state diagram because uh, this basically helps to build the mental model of how the circuit breaker should work right and when we are talking about how it should work now let's take a look at a sample code so we have established that there are three states right so if we take an enum safe state and there will be three states uh, closed open and half open right we are also going to maintain four variables right so uh, we can maintain the failure uh, the failure threshold the failure count timeout and the last failure time and we'll understand how these are being used in the program now your first statement your first check whenever you are executing the request is you are checking if the state is in open state and if the timeout is less than the time that has already passed that means from the last time that the failure occurred till this till current time if that difference is greater than what you have set your timeout for right 
then you want to allow certain traffic to go through right so basically you're moving the state to a half open state if your state is in a closed or half open state that means you want the traffic to go through right so in the try block you are basically performing the request once the request is performed depending on if you are getting a successful response then you are basically setting your failure count to zero right because you don't want to keep track of the failure count because your last request succeeded and from now on you obviously want to let requests to succeed and reach the target service so you move the state to closed state however if the if the request failed and you catch an exception you are going to increase the failure count right because that will be obviously more than the uh, time that it was previously and if you are setting it at zero then it will be one right and then you are checking if your failure count is greater than the failure threshold you must have set some threshold you are not going to indefinitely try if it is if it has reached the uh, limit the failure threshold limit like we saw, saw in the state diagram uh, the state is going to move to an open state again right and so you are basically not going to allow any traffic any further right uh, so that is a sample implementation of the circuit breaker now it can be implemented in various ways but this is a very sample implementation if you are getting a question in your in your system design or in your uh, in your programming uh, object oriented programming interviews then you can maybe implement it in this way right there is also one critical thing that you might want to mention uh, like which are like uh, uh, and on card pullers right which is like you are providing a reset method a reset method is say if you are having a huge large scale event right where your service is completely down at that point of time you want to reset right you want to reset the failure count you want to move that service to a closed state and allow the traffic and again restart that circuit breaker operation right so it is better to have a have a catch all kind of a re reset button so that the system can move back to a to a normal state right so now let's take a look at some of the benefits obviously it improves system resiliency provides fault tolerance monitoring and visibility yep i mean these are you must have already understood these are some of the benefits it it also provides huge system stability i should have mentioned that uh, basically circuit breaker pattern is a pattern which is used for shaping your traffic right and you basically don't want your system to be in a down state while it is in a down state bombarded with more requests right so which is where uh, it is very useful and it is most of the time used uh, i mean i have myself implemented more than five or seven times circuit breaker in different various applications right so that is whenever you are working on a distributed applications or microservice architecture where the requests that are serving uh, that are coming at a high load or at peak times uh, circuit breakers are often uh, required in those kind of systems uh, now certain considerations obviously you might not want to implement circuit breaker within an application right circuit breaker so this is entirely for a distributed application this is where they are, you are you are calling services over the network right they are network hops and at that kind of time you want to implement a circuit breaker but if you are accessing say a database or a cache or something uh, in memory cache or something within the service or within the application whatever you are implementing there implementing a circuit breaker might not make sense it will it will basically add more uh, uh, resource to your already uh, your uh, latency uh, to your traffic right another thing is obviously as you might have understood it is obviously additional development and also various tuning like all these we have values regarding your failure count your timeouts your connection timeouts request timeouts so these are various values that you have to tune depending on various times of your application usage right so that is a maintenance overhead uh, plus also there are a lot of like uh, development not only development in terms of but also in terms of uh, uh, understanding what works that getting to that exact number is it a three retry or 250 milliseconds or that exact number is very fine-tuned number which can only come over a period of time once you understand your traffic patterns right so that was circuit breaker pattern hopefully this was useful thanks for watching